Assalamu alaikum everybody, what up? How's everyone doing? Uh, I hope uh, the late night family is doing well. Uh, tonight is episode 28 of hashtag LNT. Now you know me, I'm coming to you live, Ahmed Ali from the holy city of Karbala. Uh, and as you know, the late night talk is the best topic to talk about it, especially in this 30 day Ramadan series. Now, 28 days, 28 nights if you want to be nights. But that means there's only two or three days left, three more episodes or two more episodes, depending on when they see the crescent and so on and so forth. That means you only have two or three more chances to have your name placed in that final draw. But tonight's topic, I know the school year is over and all that, uh, and everyone's relaxed, everyone uh, is out of their depression moments of you know preparing for exams. Uh, they're chilling, summer's here. But tonight's topic is about how, you, how it will make you decide on how you should study in next year but let's go take a quick break and come back very short talk about what's trending welcome back dear viewers hope everyone is enjoying their night uh, now uh, tonight it's a, it's a very interesting what's trending for you guys now Haider al-Abadi uh, the Prime Minister of Iraq uh, said on Tuesday that he opposed any repeat uh, of the elections that was done on May 12th and uh, he warned that anyone that does sabotage uh, the political process will be punished uh, and severely punished uh, you know it's, it's, it's about time uh, Shorty comes out uh, and, and says something good uh, but the parliament has demanded nationwide uh, re-election uh, but Haider al-Abadi as he said anyone that does that and the only uh, the only person or the only uh, party that can say that is uh, the Supreme Court of Iraq who can declare such a uh, such a decision the parliament has no say into that only the Supreme Court of Iraq now let's go jump in to another what's trending at least two people were, were held hostage uh, in Paris on Tuesday Spokesperson uh, of Paris police uh, says there was no indication uh, of the incident that was, you know, terrorism, terrorism related. Uh, but the hostage, a uh, young woman uh, and a woman, a young girl and a woman uh, who were uh, evacuated uh, from the scene uh, by the police later on. France has uh, been in a state uh, of the high alert, uh, you know, with, with the stabbings, with the, the hostage taking and so on and so forth. Hopefully everyone uh, is safe, you know, stay safe uh, and hopefully everyone uh, doesn't have to fall into such situations. But let's go jump into tonight's topic because I'm excited. Welcome back dear viewers. Now with the advancement of the modern day technology and with our kids being in school using paper textbooks, um, the demand to switch from paper textbooks, uh, the old school books, to uh, new technologies uh, is, is, is on a demand. A lot of people are demanding this. Now, tablets are a tw $72 billion industry with 42% of the U.S. adults possessing and using a tablet, any form of tablet or e-reader. Now, now the, the, the demand on switch, they're, they're trying uh, to switch from old-fashioned, old-school textbooks uh, to electronic textbooks, uh, aka tablets or e-readers, they want to start it from kindergarten all the way up to grade 12. Uh, and a lot of reasons they say there are pros and there are cons. Now, supporters of this say it's much lighter. Uh, you need to print a lot. It's safer for the environment. Uh, you know, it's easy to access. Uh, it's, it's, it's lighter than carrying a hundred books when you can have it in one, you know, simple tablet. There's an iPhone on a tablet, but you know, it's easier to carry on just a simple tablet. However, the others, the opposers of such an idea, the opposers of the switch to th this modern day technology are saying that, you know, it's expensive. First of all, it's expensive when they go, when they get outdated, you have to buy a new one and it's costly. You have to pay a lot to buy it or you have to pay a lot to fix it. And, you know, it's time consuming just to fix it as well, depending on who you take it to. Uh, it might take several days, several weeks. Um, so that's important to keep in mind as well. Others are saying it's bad for the eyesight. Um, for me, I just go buy a retina display. But, you know, others, they maybe don't have the idea. But anyways, tonight, 
we're trying to talk about something important. You know, everyone nowadays, especially me when I was in university, I had to spend thousands of dollars on textbooks, similar to all the university students. Now, not a lot of them, not a lot of the books are, you know, pr are available on the e-readers or are on, on, uh, on the uh, tablets. So what do we do? We go spending thousands of dollars, um, you know, uh, giving back to the university thousands of dollars, accumulating to billions of dollars, depending on which university to go to and what, what books you're, 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 you're buying uh, to the students. But tonight on hashtag LNT, we're trying to find out one thing, and we're trying to ask you one thing. At school, what do you prefer to use? Textbooks or tablets in schools? That's your question for tonight. Very simply, textbooks or tablets in schools. So what you have to do, pick up your phone, open WhatsApp. You have to unlock it first. Um, open WhatsApp, uh, dial that number shown below, plus 9647740678136. You can give us a call. You can, get, you can send us a text message, a voice message uh, to participate in the live show today. As I mentioned, you have either two or three days depending on when they see the crescent. Um, so you know, you guys have what, roughly three days, two days left to participate, to have your names placed in the fishbowl right here next to me. Um, you know, the, the blessed fishbowl, as I was mentioning from the first day of Ramadan. Now, we are live on Facebook as well, so you can go on Facebook and check out all the good stuff. Give that thumbs up, share, like, and comment. Whoever comments during the live show and opening the lines again, whoever comments even after the live show, we're gonna go back, so don't worry, we're gonna go back to the other lives and we're gonna write down the names who commented after the live as well. So, everyone that comments on Facebook, their, their names will also be placed in the fishbowl, so everyone's getting the chance to win that free trip to Karbala. Now, let's take a quick break. Let me drink some water and come back to talk about more on the biggest hit in the industry right now, tablets versus textbooks. Hit it. Now, according to, uh, to, to many academic reports, 2012 was the year that really hit it hard for, uh, that hit the home run, or should I say, for tablets. The, the year that m almost a lot of people, you know, it's, it's a huge percentage of people that, that were using uh, tablets uh, instead of smartphones uh, and desktop or laptop computers. Now, as of January 2014, the U.S. adults that owned a tablet computer was 32 percent. 42, 32 percent, 42 percent, sorry. 32 of them owned a e-reader and 50 percent of that population either had a tablet uh, computer or an e-reader. It went up from 29% since of August 2012. So we do see the huge rise in, in numbers and percentage on how many people are using uh, tablets uh, and e-readers uh, nowadays. This is according to P, uh, Pew Research uh, Project uh, on the internet. Now approximately 227 million tablets were shipped in 2013 uh, and predicted you know, in, in the near future, as of 2020, the industry of tablets could reach $70 billion. Wow. $70 billion industry just for tablets. This is crazy. You know, if someone was to, was to think about that and trying to comprehend that idea, $72 billion or $70 billion, uh, and you know, 43% of Westerners, if, if, if you look at social media right now, any news that you want to get, no one's buying papers, uh, newspapers. No one, you know, for, for me, when, I, when I'm trying to, you know, check out what's going back, uh, what's going on in Canada, I just go on the Hamilton Spectator, download the, 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 uh, the newspaper of the day, read it. Toronto Star, Toronto Sun, I just go and, and, and look at what's going on. So basically, everyone right now, 43% are using uh, e-readers and tablets uh, in Western countries. Social media, as soon as you open it, this thing happened in Paris. This, some random attack happened in, in somewhere else. Uh, you get notifications, even from YouTube now. 
you get notifications if, if you subscribe to a, to a specific channel. So we, we, we do see that you know um, news, education, everything, social media and tablets and e-readers made it so easy for people to get to know everything that's going on. Not e-readers, but tablets and smartphones and social media made it so easy for everyone just to access and know everything about the world. You know, just at the fingertips, right there. Five fingertips, unlock with the thumb and use the, uh, the, the, the index finger. Now, um, we do remind everyone to uh, call in, let us know what you think, because tonight's question is all about you students out there uh, going through university. Um, so what you have to do is pick up the phone, down the number shown right there at the bottom, uh, and let us know what you think about tonight's question. Tablets? or textbooks in schools. Which one do you prefer? All you got to do is call us and send us a, a text message, voice message. Uh, let us take a quick break and come back very, very short. Once again, we do welcome everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, now, uh, for the dear viewers who are just tuning in right now, you guys, if you're wondering what we're talking about, um, we're talking about a uh, very important topic that um, is about to revolutionize uh, studying everywhere around the world. We're talking about tablets or textbooks in your schools. Which one do you prefer? Now, even blackboards and whiteboards are now being switched uh, with uh, smart, smart boards. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a huge, uh, you know, uh, evolution we're going through, if, uh, if I may say, uh, of what's going on uh, from blackboards to smart boards, from textbooks to tablets and e-readers. Now, the most important questions, should schools make that switch? Should schools, starting from kindergarten, ending up in grade 12, switch from using a textbook, coloring in, uh, coloring books, um, you know, uh, adding numbers and stuff. Should they switch from that and go to, uh, to tablets or should they stick uh, to, to, to the old school uh, textbooks and not go to the electronic versions of textbooks? Now, we gathered some pro and cons for you, but I want to start with the pros and then go to the cons. Now, one of the cons is that, you know, uh, a lot of people are saying nowadays uh, that according to the U.S. Department of Education, um, students, when they're using tablets, their, uh, their ability to learn is a lot quicker than textbooks. You know, technology-based uh, instruction can reduce uh, the time spent or the time to take to reach uh, the learning objective. Uh, because honestly, with a textbook, you have to go through page by page and you can't search, but with a tablet, just hit that search button, look for that word, look for that sentence, pops up, that's it. You have it right there. So, you, you know, you're, you're reducing at least, at least if you have like a 500 uh, hard copy textbook, you know, you're, you're, you're spending half an hour less just to look for that uh, answer that you're looking for. That's the first pro. Now, the second pro, 81% of kindergarten to grade 12 teachers are saying that tablets enrich classroom education. Why do they believe that? Because they've concluded, according to the public broadcast service, that 77% of teachers found technology to increase student motivation to learn. You know, if you have students who are in grade 5, and, you know, in, in grade 5, you're like, what? A9, maybe 10, and for them, if, if the teacher is bringing tablets or if the school is introducing tablets, they're going to be motivated to, to, to learn on those tablets because textbooks are boring. For me, I'm not saying for you, but for me, textbooks are boring. So if I was in grade five, I'd rather hold a tablet in my hand because first it looks a lot cooler than a textbook and second, it makes my life way easier. Although I didn't know that at that time, but you know, I, it just looks good. Now, the other pro of switching from old school textbooks to new technology, uh, tablets or e-readers, uh, is that the tablets can hold hundreds 
of books, if not thousands of books, depending on your storage uh, on your tablet or on, uh, uh, on, your, on your smartphone. Now, with that being said, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to take your, uh, your attention towards something very important. Now, you know, as I mentioned, it hurts a lot, you know, uh, you, you can have quizzes on that, you can have uh, exams, previous exams, you can look at the questions, predict uh, what the future exam is going to look like. Now, in Iraq, we have suffered day, uh, every other day, internet gets cut out from 7 a.m. up until 10, 10.30, 11 a.m. Why? Because the uh, results or the answers for the exam on that same day is being released half an hour before the exam. So right there, that's a huge advantage. Having a tablet and someone sending you the answers which, uh, to the exam you're having in, in 30 minutes, you know, I'm not saying I take advantage, but I would take advantage of that because I'll try to get that 100. Uh, but let's take a text message that we got from Fazi Moon again, okay, from Trinidad. Uh, tablets or tablet, we are uh, in the technology age, so we have to keep up, uh, else the children will be left behind. Less weights uh, on their backs, of course, and saves, uh, less, uh, saves the trees uh, so the earth would be cooler. Thank you very much, Fazi Moon. Uh, from Trinidad once again shout out to Fazi Moon uh, and those who are uh, constantly uh, participating uh, in the show uh, we're getting a few Facebook comments we'll get that very short another pro uh, of uh, textbooks uh, versus e-readers and tablets is that 50 to 60 percent less print textbooks you know if, if you know as j just to carry on from what Fazi Moon said you know, it makes the earth a lot nicer because trees right now, when they're being cut down, if you go back to a few episodes ago, we talked about global warming and how we're, you know, we're the, the, we're the reason why there is a global warming, warming on earth. Now, paper comes from trees. So when there's a new edition, when there's a new version of that textbook, you're gonna have another what 500 million trees cut, or you know a thousand trees cut, just to have one school, or, or or just to equip one school with textbooks. However, electronics, aka tablets and e-readers, they cost a lot less per student. How much? For each student, they cost 200 to a thousand dollars less than textbooks. What's the net worth of textbooks? It's eight billion dollars towards the education system. Eight billion dollars and if you were to go and see how many students are uh, surveyed in this uh, 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 from the, this is a report from Federal Communications uh, Commission. If you were to go see how many students and then you know minus two hundred to a thousand dollars from that cost that's going to be a lot, you know, because if students are, are using uh, or the school's providing the students with what, like say uh, 10 textbooks a year, those 10 textbooks, each textbook doesn't cost less than $100. However, if you have a tablet, I'm not trying to, you know, convince you to go buy a tablet, but I'm just, you know, saying some, some points. But if you do buy a tablet, you can have all these 10 books at like, what, $30 if you download them even paying money, $30, you have them on your tablet and ready to go like that. You can search, you can find whatever you want in that textbook instead of looking at uh, 100 pages just to find one subtitle or uh, one subtopic. Now, tablets are also, uh, or also contain a lot of technologies within them as well, a lot of software within them as well. Um, so you have a, a variety of things that can enhance your, your IQ, that can help you think better. You know, you can, if, if, if you like to listen to some relaxation tunes and read, uh, you know, it's, it, it just helps you uh, with whatever you want to do and relaxes you, uh, other than a textbook, because you can't plug a headphone in a textbook, uh, unless I, I think so, I think you can. But now, I want to go and look at the cons of textbooks. Now, the cons of textbooks are kind of also 
you know, uh, they're, 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 they're a bit true. You know, they, they kind of make sense, just like how the pros made sense. Now, the first cons uh, is that tablets are associated with health issues, health concerns, and health problems uh, that our kids are growing up with. Um, once I saw a video on, uh, on YouTube and on Facebook that was going viral on how kids nowadays, when their parents want them to shut up, they give them their phones or they give them their iPads or tablets. What ends up being that kid, there's, there, there's the, the wetness in the eye, there's a, a material in the eye, a liquid in the eye. If a child's exposed to a phone or to, a, to, 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 a, to an iPad or to a tablet, at a young age, that liquid dries up in the eye, which increases the, the, the percentage or the chances of that kid becoming blind or a lot of times becoming colorblind. So that's important. Another health problem that goes uh, with uh, using tablets and, and uh, new technologies for education is the computer vision syndrome. And that's very dangerous if you go back and look at what that is. Um, and then you have the, the, the eye strain, uh, you have the headaches that come from looking at a lot of, uh, and I, I sometimes suffer from that as well every time I look at a computer. I, I sit a lot in front of a computer, look at my phone a lot. So I, I get a lot of headaches. So this is personal. It's not like research is telling me. You know, I felt this on a personal level. Another one uh, is that sometimes tablets can be more expensive than textbooks. And this is very true as well, because a textbook, there's not every year that you know there, there's a new addition to it. Every five or six or seven years, there's a new addition, there's a new upgrade, there's a new, uh, th th there's a new textbook coming into the class. But with, an, with, with, with a tablet or an iPad or an e-reader, you have to update it every now and then. And, the, and, and what the, you know, the, the, the business-minded uh, uh, business owners or, or the company owners of tablets, uh, what they do, every now and then, they give you an update. And that update sometimes ruins the battery, slows down your tablet, you know, it, it destroys it. So what you're going to end up doing is throwing that away or selling it for cheap and going buying a new one. So technically, you know, every year, every two years, you have to go buy a new one, whereas textbook, you just get one for six years or seven years. Another text message from... Samina from Pakistan says tablets can cause children to lose in, uh, interest in books and from young age they'll get addicted to technology, they'll lose the taste of real world. Technology makes things easier but it should be used within limits. Thank you very much Samina for joining us uh, tonight. Samina, Pakistan. Okay, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Name written on a sticky note, name going into the fishbowl. All right, thank you very much, Samia. Uh, but let's go check out what the expert has to say. Joining us tonight, Sister Barak Hussein from Canada, AKA the Muslim counselor, psychotherapist from Ottawa, Canada. Let's go see what she has to say about textbooks versus tablets. Assalamu alaikum. This is Barack Hussein, the Muslim counselor, registered psychotherapist. So, books or technology? Which is better for the brain? How does this impact you? How does it impact a developing child? There has been so much research out there lately where we see the negative influence and impact of technology such as iPads or iPhones or you know any gadgets like that where they have a negative impact on the brain especially the developing child's brain and of course what do parents do the first thing that they're when their child is crying they hand them the phone to keep them quiet and keep them busy and it's scary to see how young now children can just you know swipe the phone over and access anything that's on the phone just to keep them quiet or busy so you know on one hand, we think, all right, it's okay, you know, keep them busy, but what is it really doing to your child's brain? In terms of the brain development of the child, we can also see as grown-ups, when you want to go to sleep, for example, you find yourself, you know, just reading on your phone, going through social media and just being busy, and it becomes really hard to go to sleep at that time. Well, 
brain research has shown that the light off of the iPad or the iPhone can actually keep the brain awake longer and keep you stimulated basically. So that also has a huge impact on your sleep uh, patterns as well. And in terms of actual learning, we see in education, smart boards and smart projectors and that kind of technology has been useful in terms of making things more easily accessible for students, but there has to be a fine balance in terms of actually using books and using this type of technology. And so a lot of schools have used this technology to give better access and opportunities for children to learn using all sorts of mediums through that. We also have to be careful in terms of still using the books. So books or technology, what's better? We always need to give our brain a little bit of a rest, nothing good, like a good book to finish off the end of the day. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>